Hi guys and welcome to the channel and welcome to another video. Uh, this one obviously is going to be another update on the USACC group build. Um, as you can see right now, I've not touched it at all since the last video. It got put down and life got in the way unfortunately and I've had absolutely no bench time on it. But yeah, so like I say, all we've done is the body so far. We've got less than a month now to get this thing finished i'm not too sure if i'm gonna make the deadline this time i'm afraid um because we've still got a full kit to build um with a lot of custom work involved uh i think in what we're going to concentrate on next is making sure the floor pan i've noticed the floor pan wants to slide about a bit and there's some there's some space in spacing round at the bottom mate, over here so i just really want to get some of that figured out to be quite honest with you um make sure that once it's all painted this isn't going to slide about and there's going to be no ugly gaps in there at all so uh, want to be doing that i've really got to get onto the chassis um i really want to get the stamps everything sorted so uh, there's going to be a lot of fabrication in the chassis, um, which we, we will be using a portion of the stock chassis. But I did mention in a in a video, it seemed an age away now, this thing's been going on so long. I was contemplating using parts from this one. It was a complete kit, it was just missing the original bubble top. But um, I... I I'm really paining myself to, to, even though it's missing bubble top, I do have a spare bubble top, and even though it's a bit nasty, I might get a complete kit out of that one day and, and build it. So, um, so I do have a one of these, but um, this is not the kit I'm I'm gonna be using. Uh, but I do have a, a parts kit with a with an extra chassis. Um, uh, it didn't have a body, so it's, it's pretty much everything except from the the body on the parts kit I've got. And I'm I'm just gonna before I make the decision to to ruin my predictor, I just want to check which is the best chassis uh, to fit under to fit under the the cab for the. I don't want the wheels too far in, and um, and also what's gonna be best mated to this as well. So. I've got a couple of options on them, but you know, I think um, I'm hoping we get somewhere by by end of this video. Like, and you know, like I say, I've got I've got so much to do in in less than a month that you know, I really need to start cracking on with this. And but the good thing is that I'm my business will that will start quiet enough at the end of this week, um, and I pretty much think I've secured. My finances for the next for the next month at least um so that's going to let me have a bit of time over christmas to to do a bit of relaxing and, and getting back to the bench a lot more so there's a chance we'll make it there's a chance we won't make it but you know we'll, we'll just do what we we have been doing with these videos just doing clips and what have you and just seeing how far we get if I, if I think there's wor anything worth stopping for I, I will stop as usual and, and just show you progress but hopefully by end of video um we'll we'll have something that looks a little bit more like a, a rolling truck at least uh okay with that said we will see you in a second Right then, well, as you can see, we have moved on a, a little bit since the last clip. Uh, main reason being is I actually filmed that intro about two weeks ago now. Um, I think at that point we had a day over, uh, four weeks to go, and now we're on New Year's Day and we've got a day less than two weeks to go. So, uh, yeah, I think time is really ticking away and we we. I'm doing my very best to, to get this thing finished. But, you know, over the last two weeks, all I've done is just duck into it every every time I've got a spare hour or two or a spare half hour uh, just to get this thing finished. Um, I'll try and get it finished. But, 
you know, so we'd, we've had to go into obviously the rest of the kit and the next stage was the, the back end of floor pan and pick up bed and everything like that. And I originally picked out this thing. Uh, it was from a, a monogram original issue 44 uh, pickup. And at that point, I think it was in the early stages of the build. I've not, I'd not really looked past the body to be quite fair too much. It was just really in memory that this had like uh, some form of a diamond pattern to it on the on the original. And this was just it would the the pleats were just too close together, too deep, and even though it's a, a lovely lovely little part, is that you know. Um, just wasn't good enough for this this project so it certainly wasn't matching to to the original trucks uh and i was a bit good to take that away from that old old 40 ford kit because it's got a really nice matching uh pleated interior in that so i'll repatriate that and with that one and you know we'll build out of one some other day like but you know that obviously left me with no pickup bed uh cover um got plenty in in the parts boxes but nothing which would really work with this to be quite fair so you know this is what i've ended up coming up with it look, does look like a bit of a pepper shaker at the moment but you know that that's because when i was looking at the pictures of the bed cover on the real truck it didn't really have any pleats between the, the buttons it was a very flat looking uh pearl white leather bed with just uh, buttons in there, so, uh, you know, before we got on to all that though, I really wanted something to fit this, to fit this bed well, to be quite fair, I wanted something to contour over the sides pretty well, stay in place without too much trouble, and, um, and so in one of the early videos, again, I think it was the same video as that when I showed the 44 I've just bought to, to rob that bed cover out of. Uh, I had this old AMT um, pickup bed. And I was just, one day I was just playing around with it just to see what the, the scale difference was between 24th and 25th scale. And to be quite fair, you know, there's, it's obviously shorter and what have you. But... It almost just fit. You could almost just drop it into the monogram bed, the same T bed, and it just gave me an idea to that the the top of the top of this bed would pretty much be roughly the same as the as the monogram one for contours and what have you. It's got a nice roll on the edge. So as you can see, I've just cut off the size off this uh, AMT one wasn't quite long enough to to go the full length so we ended up cutting into a it was actually the, the pickup bed from the my original uh mountain pearl project i started years i mean i didn't get very far with that one to be quite honest with you um but we did have to have to add a bit of length i could have done it with um sheet styrene but i wanted something which would kind of match the, the contours which are already in there so we had to we had to poach that bed out of that other AMC uh, mountain pearl I started and so I was a bit gutted but luckily I did find another pickup bed uh, in parts box which you know that can that can go with that kit now and make it complete again not that I'll ever build it but um, so yeah we we basically started by cutting off the the sides of the beds of the AMC bed I just sat them in there so that they would to the point where they would sit against the sit against the bed rails quite well like and you know match what the monogram one looked like so and then once i'd got them in place i just taped them down as tight as i could so they wouldn't move uh they're in a as you can they were almost going down at a, an angle in the in the in the bed when i just placed them in there and i just got a bit of sheet styrene or a big thick piece of sheet styrene and 
while they were all taped in, just glued that in there. But, you know, I think uh, I mean, we've done quite a bit to it. I mean, there's quite a lot of work, actually, into this this bed cover alone. Um, you know, we caps all the ends off with sheet styrene and we boxed it all in like so uh, it does it, it it sets me up a little bit for what I want to do underneath um, whether I might upholster it or just paint it I don't know I think I mean when I talk about upholstering stuff you know that's why this project might not even make the deadline like but um, but you know we, we got it to the point where it fits like I say really well all the way around and the other thing I hate about bed covers on model kits is that as soon as you slightly touch it pick up the uh, bed cover goes flying off across the across the floor like so uh, but this one it the reason why I box it all in so there's no movement whatsoever you know it sits it sits exactly where I want it want it to sit I can take all this away paint it and continue to work on this as a separate part but you know you know it doesn't it doesn't really come off that that easy to be quite fair i mean i think we could probably tilt it you know well i mean tilt it all the way upside down and it's 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 a it's a tight enough fit without it being a tight enough fit for it to damage me paint and all it'll take to come off is a bit of a shake there like so uh, but um you know i think when i so that that's pretty much the bed cover anyway and uh, that, that's done now um and then when i, I like I say i pulled out the rest of the kit and kind of seen other people's videos and noticed that this this body really doesn't mock up well at all i mean it just doesn't mock up on the original on the original bed floor and, and chassis plate uh, cab floor it just wants to slide forward all the time I tried masking it in place so I can mock it up but the, the thing is with this project I can't rely on really masking tape to to really set me up for when it comes to putting it all together for the last time um, if there's any movement in there then you know it, it, it just wouldn't do really I mean so not not for this particular project anyway but but there's a couple of issues with this which is pushing it forward there's a bit of an issue on the back here um, I think if anything you could probably sand down that a little bit and just drop the bed over so it has that something to catch on at least um, but it just seems like it just wants to sit forward and it's kind of dictating this and these on the original chassis these parts really dictate to where your body sits on this on this kit I found and they, you mean you can see on there how much of a gap there is and I'm trying to sort of push it back but I think the only thing I could think of doing really was I, I literally pushed the, the cab back as far as I could so it's really tight to the to the running boards and and I know I could do that when it was glued and what I, when on final gluing but I didn't really want to trust it trust it like that and so I mean all I did was go in there with a with a pencil line sit as far as I could back drew a pencil line didn't really know what to do with it from then I, I just knew that's where I wanted my bed to sit so it met the, the running boards all right and then I had a strip of st styrene on the bench and a, the glue so I just didn't even cut the styrene I literally just whacked it in there because you're not going to see any of this behind the behind the uh, behind the bench seat and what have you um, I did glue it in in haste as well I didn't think it was going to be a permanent thing so I glued it a bit of an angle so I then had to go in and sand this side down so it didn't 
push the body to one over to one side but you know that's kind of that alone kind of solved all me muck up muck up issues because this body has been on and off this 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 plate now and, and bed a million times over the last course of the last couple of weeks and um it's just allowed that one little bit of styrene um has allowed me to continue to mock this up and i know it's going to go in the right place when it's all painted and you know where it sits now is where it's going to sit when on the on the final assembly um but like i say you will you do have to trim some of these away as well i mean i, I sanded the edges down on 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 the chassis i'm i'm going to be using because that alone just just wants to push your body forward does, does that like so so that was that issue sorted anyway and then i could once i'd done that i could then start building the box and what have you and again the box is another thing you just can't mock up on this you have to glue it um i mean there's two ways you could do it if you i think if i was to build another one uh stock or something like that i'd definitely i'd definitely glue the 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 bed gate down just so I, I know it's all square and i can lift it off paint it separately but you know for this one i didn't really have the luxury i needed i needed the bed in place uh for a few reasons so i mean we we started uh I did a bit like hey auto there's there is an issue with how these sit and now monogram marks them up on here it's also leaving gaps at the at the bottom of the running boards uh, a bit like hey auto did it did kind of slightly rotated them so they don't look like, like they're dropping down too much at the back um i didn't want it completely squared up on the back because you know they're it does have a curve anyway but not to the extent i think that monogram did on this one but so we glued all them in place and just before i did that because I, I do have a, a bit of an issue with this with the paint job is that one thing it's time um one thing yeah that it's, i've got to put red inside here um and it's just i just don't think i've got time for for adding that on to the paintwork i mean i'm gonna probably have to do it anyway as a bit of a base up there because we got the a bit of the bottom we need in 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 the red color but i was just kind of um well, so i think this is the right side and this is the left side i think yeah pretty much but we i kind of got these in place set them in um and then i didn't glue them in place at the time because i wanted a bit of sheet styrene behind there and once i got the kind of once i got the fenders where i wanted them uh i put these uh about messing about too much with that now but you know i thought i'd make some panels as a bit of an option um to go in there i've just got to take a little bit i think what i've done is i put some stanchions in there and i need to tuck that in behind there like so but they all fit underneath there they'll glue in place quite well i think i've since i've done did these i have put them stanchions in so i'm just going to take a little bit of trimming off there good thing i've noticed that now like before i started painting them but yeah so these will be removable panels um which i can just slide over there um they'll all be painted separately i won't have to go into too much masking because i think what i was worried about is tightness of gaps and how neat they are they're going to be around here uh i certainly didn't want to paint red before i painted white 
for obvious reasons and I didn't want to start priming over layers of paint because it's just going to make the lines too too difficult that you know so we've done those for both sides and what have you so we can paint the paint the uh, sides separately I mean that side goes in a lot better now but um, and then I also did a, a, a plate for the bed as well so uh, most of the most of the red I can do off the car I'm hoping I'm hoping if I need to paint it I'll need to paint it if these looks absolutely terrible I'll I'll redo them um, but I kept the off cuts from these as well because I think yeah I kept these off cuts because I am going to go in and just do the same for underneath here because I think the behind the, the wheels was uh, the the candy red as well like so uh, I'll just need to trim them up a little bit more and match them to the to the to the bed floor a little bit better like and we'll get on with that but but yeah I mean that um that brings us on to the rear end of course and another thing we just had to build from scratch to be quite honest with you um you know I've, I found some quad headlamps in the parts box which were about the right size for what I, what I wanted really so you know I think uh but the problem with those one was they were, they were completely solid so I then had to start drilling out all the centers and and filing them out so they're straight and they're, they're more of a bezel because I've got some of the larger 58 Chevy tail lights which came in that uh, Mercury kit that the, what was it the 64 Mercury Marauder they fit inside of here lovely now I think I've got a little bit more sanding to do but I'm just going to wait for, for the final body filler before, before I trim those lights down but we built a I mean behind all this it's quite a quite a framework of sheet styrene and and everything else which to which we needed to to make up that that rolled rear pan um and the reason why i put stanchions in on on this thing is because the original i think on the on, on the original bed monogram bed i think they're very undefined anyway and especially with the potential of us putting them um, bits of sheet sheet plastic in there painted you know that's that's going to raise the the actual depth for the the bed further outwards uh and we, we needed something to to match it in with the, the rear end so i've done a works in the whole rear stanchion into the into the roll pan um you know finished off with a bit of a end line there which me me bed plate and uh, me pick up a uh, tailgate cover can just sit down into i believe on the original truck it was actually a, a fixed part you know i don't think they have done operational uh tailgate on that one either but you know i think um i think we got the look for it anyway um got the right kind of contours in i mean it's never going to be 100 100 percent but it's it's close enough that you'll recognize it as the as the mountain pearl um pick up beds uh, and we did also and the reason I, I needed these fenders gluing on uh, before we painted it as well is because they are bobbed into the into the roll pan um on the real trucks uh, there was no way we, we could have done that with keeping them separate and what have you so uh, just playing around with all the other stuff like that but but I think that's turned out quite well and you know sitting that on top of there and you know I think we're starting to get a a bit of a look at the how the full truck's gonna look like um so yeah that that was that bit anyway and then my other issue is that I need this in paint by Wednesday, absolute latest, I'm at 
work all day tomorrow. I think the next day where I've got a bit of time is Wednesday. And so I've got to finish off filling this in, in the meantime and then just... I, I, I literally need it in paint by Wednesday, at least a pearl white anyway, um, to give me any form of chance of finishing this thing on time. But there's so much else that needs to needs to be done to this part like for the interior and the bed that if I was to try and get it all done beforehand we would have massive issues and I wouldn't finish it it's simple as that so what I've tried to do is make everything as modular as possible really um, so with me leftover AMT pickup bed which I'd already robbed the tops off to extend that um, rear end it was made of a bit of a modular um, part which we can take in and, and lift out at our own, our own pleasure really I mean this is actually the top of the pickup bed uh, so I flipped it up I cut the sides off um, and then I just started building up inside here, uh, just so I got a nice little cap to to go into there, and I can continue working on this whether while the paint's drying and, and we're waiting for other stuff to dry and what have you in it. We did cap all the sides, so it's you know because when you're doing these things, you the. You're never going to get a hundred percent with no gaps whatsoever. So we ended up capping all the sides and what have you to to get them gaps looking right. So and like I say, this this just pops out quite easily. So, but yeah, now I can go ahead. Like I say, you can just see where the it was starting to sit in a little bit, like and so we got all that leveled out. But yeah, but then I just started making panels to start off my interior, um, the bed interior. And like these are just white tacks in at the moment. So, but we got pretty much everything there to to the point where I'm, I'm happy with it. That's a good base for us to carry on with on another day. So. And you know we'll we'll end up putting some carpet in it at least. And like I say, I don't know whether I'm going to go into the whole upholstery thing or just do some like paint it matte, do it pearl white, but with a, a matte clear over it or something. It's um, I know which I'd rather do, but I don't know yet. I don't know. I mean, it's um, it's a, a case of what do you do in the in the time and like I say the more things I keep doing like that is why it's still at this stage at this point but but yeah that, that brought us on to the interior again another thing which it, it's completely custom on this thing so and I did I was trying I was going to use the um, original door panels how, how they were but no matter how they just weren't right to be quite honest with you. That's I, I sanded them all off and put some sheet styrene down, but and the way they want you to to fit this dashboard in the when I looked at the first time I've looked at instructions for probably ten years like, but yeah, I think they want you to glue this to the back of the glass and I've already made my own glass for this, uh um Using the kit glass wasn't going to be a, a, an option for me, really. So we've, we've had to glue that in place because I was having probably I need door panels on it, but I was having issues with the way these were set out and trying to lay a body down over this. I mean, I could glue the dash to these and try and work it that way, but the amount of work that's going to go into the door cards... It was just going to cause me fit issues, plus the way they want it. Plus, I did try and sit it down over over this with these taped in place, and I thought after I've got the body fitting so nice, these were causing massive fit fit issues, keeping them as they are with the way these 
slot down in the in the gaps between the between you know the the cab floor and and so I, I got pretty far with them until I kind of realised about this problem and the top problem as well where it wouldn't it I'd struggle dry building it because I want to dry build everything and then the more I do like this the, the less I've got to worry about on the back end. Uh, it might be a case of slow and steady wins the race, but God, I, I really don't know. So, so we have um, made a started fabricating a couple of door cards now. These are actually the centre sections of these, because um, I'd already done work. I've already sanded these off, and it, they do take quite a bit of sanding to to get all this this trim detail off and what have you and, and whatever these are supposed to be so um yeah i think uh yeah we, we cut the tops off and then that got us away from the fit issues with the dash but the other thing that bug, bugged me on this as well is that when you look through the chassis you've got massive gaping holes coming through here and you've got a massive gaping hole uh looking into the back of the fender through here so uh, it was it took a lot of time but i was literally fitting them over and then just tipping them up the best i could um but we got a really nice sort of fit in there now i know i can if i've, I've done that that easily um that's how i want it to go together at the end because you know i can poking down and glue them to the to the uh cab once it's all painted and on vinyl fit and what have you and i think the only thing we've got to do now is if you see there's a you know where the top of the to, top of the dash meets the door card there's nothing really meeting it at the moment so we just got to build the top of these up and in all fairness you know we haven't not used much of this um you know we cut the we cut the top off cut the bottom off but all them apart from this bit of sheet styrene here and the, the sheet styrene that used as a blanking plate um you know the, the top was just once we cut that off i think we cut this side off um and then just laid them on the laid them on the top of here uh just to give it a bit of a bit of flow into whatever we put into on top like and and the bottoms we use for for all the capping plates all the way around like on the front and the back so it's still pretty much 100 percent all this part you know really you know if you, there's not I didn't waste much of this part regardless how different they look like and like I say them two are just setting us up to to do a bit more like and we can do all that again away from the from the cab now um I might just have to do the tops of them door cards before we'd start messing around with how they're gonna look and what have you and then um came to the seat now i was originally going to use uh the, the original bench seat um i think they, they had a 58 impala seat in the original truck and you know it's uh and i have plenty of 58 impala seats but they're all 125th and they're all far too short for this uh i just went at my issue with it, and I, I didn't mind modifying this to kind of make it look like a, a 58 Impala, Impala seat. I mean, there wasn't much really to determine uh, that by the time they've upholstered it and what have you, but it just seemed like I had a really narrow seat base here, and the, and the, and the back six leans really forward, and it wasn't really giving me much sort of work. Uh, room to work with so i found this one which in the parts box you know and 
That's a bit more length to that seat. Um, that leans back a little bit more like I wanted it to. And, you know, that, that pretty much fits over the... Fits over the... Uh, kit mounting joint points and what have you. And then... You know, and I've just given it a light sanding to get rid of any high ridges or anything. I mean, it's it's nowhere near finished, but you know, for what we get, we might put on top of it. I just needed it kind of flat all the way around, and then we just blanked off the back. It's like the kit, like the kit part. You know, it doesn't have a back to the seat, and once that sits in there, you can see the back of that. You can, even though it sits slightly under it, you can still see there's no back to that seat. So I give when I, I saw that when I was trial fitting that. So it just give me a bit of heads up. So we shoved a bit of sheet plastic in there. Um, what else have we got? Um, started to do a headliner because the original truck had a headliner. So yeah, just um. Did a rough marking out on the top of you know i wasn't even going to attempt to get in underneath there and figure out what size so i just went went from the top uh traced around that and bit of, bit of trimming and what have you but you know now now that sits in there and i can do whatever i need to do with that separate away from the truck now so all this stuff um yeah, all this stuff I can continue to work on once this is in paint and what have you. Like just like the grill, the grill needs finishing off like so. Uh, and what else have we got? Oh, God, this is half an hour. See this is what doing two weeks worth of work comes up with. Um oh, last thing so far for the for the bed and the, the cab floor and running boards is for the Mountain Pearl has um, these painted in candy red and just the tightness of all this and then the thought of mask in it after paint. I mean, again, I could have really based up with red first and then just put a line on top of that. But even doing straight lines like that, I think it, because all my fenders are in place and everything, it just makes it, really difficult for anything like that and that that's where my problems would be so yeah there'd probably be a, a good few hours masking and then whether it looks all right or not i, I wasn't convinced with myself so i wanted i'd rather spend my time and these took me about an hour and a half to do and i've already gotten mounted to the to the i've just got a strip of uh, styrene like and you know, that's got them mounted to, to where I need them to be uh, for painting, sorry. But, yeah, we, we took the arduous task of making... Um, and this is just half round, and we've, we've cut all these to length. And won't use that one because it's just too much shadow. And this, in fact, this is the one which I use for, for this for this job and hence why this second kit has been absolutely invaluable to this project but we could go around and sort of get in there i started off by just laying a bit of masking tape over and then doing a bit of uh, pencil rubbing on there just to get get a rough shape i could lay that on the lay that on the on the bench and then start getting some rough cuts and then you know, really finessing where they needed to go around here, and and this one here it was by far. I mean, this is the one I started on first on both sides because the way this cab floor sits, it it bends right into those. Uh, if you see on these, you know, I've had to take a, I've had to really take a notch out. Uh, for those to, to fit nicely around it so I'm not going to have too many issues and even if you know I've tried to get them as straight as possible as I can um, but even if they're painted you know this this stuff sands down so nicely that you know you probably get a fine sanding stick on, on any of the edges and 
level them all out, even with paint on and, and not see it, or little tiny bits of touch up, you know. But that makes it just ultimately easier for me to do when on final assembly, you know. So we can just then go on to sticking them on and not have to worry about masking it up, having it ruin the paint on, on this kind because this would be a nightmare to strip with this like. So, um, so yeah, we've done that. Well, and then we have made a bit of a start on the chassis. Um, and I might as well go into it now. I've just been thinking this is a... This is going to be a 40, 45 minute clip alone. Um, so I might just finish, I don't know whether just to show you what I've done and then just finish this video here because I've got about 150 um, photos I've taken over the last two weeks. I'm not too sure how I'm going to put all them on the end. I don't think I will, but there's probably going to be another, at least a 10 minutes of, of pictures of stuff I've done, but what order they're in, I have no idea anymore, but yes, uh, original, original frame, um, as it stands, far too long for this thing anyway, so uh, like on the original truck, I think they had to take a, a foot out of the frame from the, from the front and the back, uh, so it fits into all their uh, roll pans and what have you so they did shorten the frame they didn't shorten the wheelbase but they shortened the frame um so obviously needed to take a little bit off this one anyway but we were talking about what we were going to use for the front suspension and i did really want to use um the monogram steering front suspension from either the orange hauler or the predictor now I was looking at the two chassis. Um, this is for the predictor, and this is uh, another one from a orange hauler kit. And the way this, I was looking at lengths first of all, or sort of for the frame rails, which would work best and. This one by far matched the, the frame rails. Or I could have cut the front end off this and pretty much mallowed it to this with very, very little issue. And I was moving away from the idea of the orange hauler just because of this bit in here. Uh, it's like the steering box um, thing, and I was wanting to use more of the frame. But so I was literally a couple of minutes away from cutting up this thing and the one thing i remembered i hadn't checked is um one thing i remember i hadn't checked was the the uh, track on it um how wide they're going to sit out in these because predicts is quite a narrow little car to be quite fair and and so just before i, I remember before i got me saw out to cut that i built one of these I, I built a predictor many years ago i think this is pretty much a build from from like when i was i'd say late teens very very early 20 i don't think it was i think i was still in my teens um when i built this maybe like yeah like 18 and 19 but like I say, maybe maybe early twenties. I, I just I just can't remember enough. And I wasn't really happy with it to be fair when I when I built it. You know, I painted it in a spray booth um, at work and didn't even bother polishing. It. There's a big lump of dirt in the in the hood there. But by the time I put it together, or I just I was so not happy with it that I didn't really bother paint, polishing that or anything. But um but do I mean it's it, it displays well if i wanted it wanted to display it i never got the canopy working i was just too worried about getting glue anywhere near this or um so yeah i don't think the canopy fully works like i mean it sits in the in the little slots but anyway i'm getting away from point but the reason why i bought this thing out is because yeah i wanted to 
check the track um, on this front axle. And once I put it in there, I mean, you're not going to really see properly, but it was just sitting so far in. It almost looked like a bit of a funny car or something like that with how far they were in. So, and I was at a point where I was like, can I get away with it? Can I get away with it? And there was just no way I was going to get away with it, to be quite honest with you. I mean, I can pretty much feel, fit the full front end of that car into that into that cab. So, luckily, um, luckily I hadn't cut the, the chassis for that predictor because I was really reluctant to do it anyway. Take it out of the take it out of a, another kit so that brought us back onto the orange crate um orange hauler sorry um chassis and like i said i've got a couple of chassis to be quite fair i was going to cut up this one first but and i am built this it was it's like a build kit i've got they've done such a nice job on it i was like i'm only going to cut up this one to do the same to this one when I finally build it so but yeah I mean um, so we went back to the orange hauler chassis and I was like say originally wanting to have a lot more of the frame to work with so I originally cut up here um, regardless of this bit in here um, and what happened when I because I'd, I'd use my uh, sprue cutters. Lazy as hell I know. And they, those things are vicious when um, when you got a bit of flex in something. And they literally snaps it off. I cut it there. It snaps off here. And this part flew off into somewhere where I'll probably never find it again. I don't think I've recovered that part to this day. Like, so. so it just left me with the the cross member really but the more I was getting into it I don't think I needed anything else so we have like I said made a start on the chassis um, we've got the cross member in place now I cut this chassis towards uh, well right behind the engine mounts because that was going to be my biggest surface for this cross member to fit in um once everything's together look, pop that in there pop that in there like so i like to say this is where you, those needed trimming so that they're, they're not fouling the body and and pushing that forward but you know i've i've, I've played around with the cross member there was enough on there that I could sort of, it was, first of all, it was sitting far too forward. Um, and I've had all the wheels sort of mocked up in here, the axles, to, well, I had to do to, to centre the wheels. So, and I have got that in about the right place now. It's about the right height. I've left a little bit, it's got a, just a littlest bit of bend where I can maybe chock in in. Put a couple of chocks in there just to lift my front end a little bit. Um, but there's a lot more work into this. Um, I'm, I'm looking at the time how long this second clip's taken now. And I'm, I'm, I'm going to continue this another day to be quite honest with you. I'm going to carry on with chassis now and try and get a bit more of that done. But, you know, we've got the front end of the chassis. Um because it, it is too short this at the moment on the front. Uh, I don't want it that short. It doesn't need anything else on it. These these will attach to the, to the body regardless. But just leaving it on there like that. It, these bits on here, they, they just remind me of like Jeremy Beadle, Beadle's hands or something like that. You know, they're just tiny and, and right pokey like so. Uh, um, so I've kept a bit of the frame. We are going to extend the frame out. Um, and I think once we've got the frame extended, we aren't really going to tell much that there's a, a cross member being installed in that because we've already started 
uh, boxing it all in for strength. You know, all these cappings on here, they you know, they're just for to add strength to this cross member because I don't want cross members snapping off the first time I put it down on or it takes a bit of knock on the bench or anything. So got all them blended in really nicely. And I think once we've put the front of the frame on or a portion of the front of the frame on and we and we're gonna the reason I've sanded down everything except from this edge here and I've just left that edge raised because I'm gonna probably put a sheet of styrene down the full frame and then just sand it together, blend it together. And that hopefully will give us a a bit of a a bit of a nicer look to the chassis, but there's still quite a lot more work in it. I'm, I think I'm going to go, I'm going to use the rear axle from this as well. Uh, so we've got, to, we've got to find a way of mounting all that. We'll probably might use some of the mounting points off, off this chassis to, to mate into this one. So we've got a, a nice little solid sturdy uh thing to do uh chassis mock-up chassis but like i say i was hoping to end this video on um you know getting some of that work done but explaining what we've done over the last two weeks you know that that's 47 minutes and i, I know i haven't covered everything to be quite honest with you um move that off to the side that will go in the bag for another 25 years or whatever it's been since i built that um but yeah, I mean, I've, I've, like I say, I think with everything we've done so far, um, I think we, I am far off getting this in paint now. Um, not got much else to do to the body. Uh, the one thing I did notice after that, after I'd done film that last uh, video on this one, which was uh, an age away. There's a right nasty gap on on this side of the the hood. I mean, the hood fits absolutely perfect, but you know, with nice gaps all around, and you know that that side's really nice. Like, so, yeah, we're just doing things like correcting things like that. You know, put just put a strip of sheet styrene in there and super glue that on, and then just trim the rail dips. Uh, um. We've got just a little bit of flatting here and there to do, but there's not many issues. Uh, I saw there's a, yeah, I marked it up the other day, but yeah, a little bit of a, a gap on there, which just needs a top, touch of filler. But, you know, so the bed's done. I think pick up bed. I don't think I need to do anything else with this now. Uh, I can't prime or paint anything until I've got the chassis mocked up. Um, I refuse to do it to be quite honest until that chassis is mocked up so but I think yeah we've got bed done um, that's the other predictor chassis um, we set ourselves up for set ourselves up for carrying on with the pickup bed interior set ourselves up the pick up bed um move them forward a little bit set us up cells up for you know paint work and for the running board so that's done like and set ourselves up for more work on the on the interior so to speak you know we've got we got the bones of what we need um, with all these panels we're making and what have you for the interior and hopefully these things will help um, even though I'm struggling a little bit on the other side you know they do fit really nice once they're in there so hopefully things like that are going to help um, you know we've made a made a bit of a start on the frame like so uh, you know that can 
continue to be worked on. I mean, it's going to be next job like anyway, but I think for this one, it's fair. Yeah, I think with that, you know, we're, we're pretty much manufacturing our own kit here, but still keeping true to the monogram kit. I don't think, barring the running gear, um, the running gear and the, and the bench seat, uh, we're not using. Obviously, we don't need the engine. The, the, the engine is just absolutely hideous, I think, on that thing. I think the running gear is absolutely... Like the, the rear axle on the, the kit one, I think is absolutely hideous. Um, so we won't be obviously using any of that. Um, but yeah, we, we're pretty... So we kept, we, we've used the original body, obviously heavily modified, but we've used the original bed, original chassis pretty much, except from a cross member. Um, so yeah, I mean, we are, we are keeping pretty true to to the monogram kit and the way I, I said before in another video the way i'm wanting to build this is to make it look a bit like a, a monogram kit you might have bought had they manufactured it like so i think that's the overall look i'm going for with the hence why i really wanted the steering from the get-go it was one of the first things that popped into my head is that you know the the predictor and the orange hauler you know and, and anything else they did the little t and a few others like which have the steering um you know that there was quite a, a nice little unique look for the monogram and with the white wall tires and i'm going to use original white wall tires i think the ones off the orange hauler and the uh predictor are too small for the truck in all fairness i think the uh i think tim's using these on on his truck but he's sectioned the body and done such nice work to that body to, to lower everything down i think these wheels look really well on the one he's done but on this big bulky thing still um yeah they're, they're just too small for it um but these are great wheels for 125th as well yeah i put these under a 125th scale 63 Plymouth once um, another one I have to redo because all bodywork sank like hell after a couple of weeks and never looked at that thing again really um, but yeah beautiful wheels and I, ne I nearly did use these but yeah I, I just don't think I can with this build unfortunately because that would using these wheels on that would have given me 100% the, the look I was after like and what we're probably going to use is going to be maybe more true to the to the original truck there there might be a bit of debate on that um because my my jaw is still out on that one which i'm gonna what i'm gonna do i want to build it so i when i left to look at it for the next 20 years if i've got that in me which i'm not too sure at the minute um but i'm gonna be happy with it rather than somebody disagreeing with um if i'm not using gold steels or if i am using the wrong gold on the steels and or if i want to use chrome reverse it's like you know that's like I say it might upset a few people for all the five seconds until you think of something else but yeah you know, I'm, I'm the one who has to look at this thing for for how long it ever long i have it like so but yeah, that that's for another another episode. Can't believe that this clip has been fifty four minutes, but and yeah, I'm definitely gonna close off the video now. It wasn't the way I planned to close off this video, and it's things like this is I've just lost an hour's building time um, for this, and probably with the amount of times so I attempted to start that, they had another half an hour on top of that, like so already an hour and a half lost out my day out my build time so uh, i think with that i am just going to wrap it up um you know i think uh we'll we'll have a we'll definitely have another video out before the end uh there's still quite a lot to do as you can see and and even if we're getting close and and you can all tell it's not going to be done on time then um you'll you'll know i've given it 
hundred and twenty percent to try and get it there, get it there like so. Uh, so yeah, with that, as it's New Year's Day, um, two weeks later after that first clip, um, I think we'll just sort of say Happy New Year to everybody. Uh, thanks for all the support as as, as usual. Um, all the subscribers, like I say, we, we we're close to a thousand. Uh, if we get there, we get there. If we don't, we don't. You know, it's it's one of those. For me at that at this point now i think like I say you do want to get over a thousand but once i get over a thousand would have would have really would it make much of a difference to me it, it really won't do so we'd love you to sub and we'd we'd love you to to watch the videos knowing that you've actually subbed and you're not just watching the videos like 60% of my audience likes uh, or 70% as it was last when I last looks but but yeah anyway we're getting into another round of things now but yeah thank you for everybody who supports the channel that, that's the, the end the, the, the crux of the story it's uh, yeah happy new every year new year everybody hope you had a great time last night whatever you did and I don't know how many more pictures we're going to fit on the end of this but I certainly won't fit all 150 on there, so we'll, you might have another 10 minutes of, of just pictures of what I've been doing to this throughout the last couple of weeks. Uh, yeah, with that, we'll see you in the next video. Okay, see you, bye.